This is a lecture on the evolutionary theories of aging and longevity from August 26, 2020. And we're going to discuss the work of these three men pictured here, particularly in this lecture, uh, August Weissman, Medawar, and Hamilton. And some of the learning objectives for today are to define um, several theories um, relating to evolution of aging and longevity, particularly the trade-off hypothesis and the mutation accumulation theory of senescence. And then we're going to explain the contributions of those three men, Weissman, Medawar, and Hamilton, to the understanding of the evolution of longevity. And we're also going to discuss the theory behind the grandmother hypothesis and evaluate its validity as an explanation um, for the evolution of longevity in humans. So just to bring everyone back up to speed and make sure we're all familiar with uh, the terms I'm going to be using in this lecture, I'm going to do a brief review of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. And so people had suggested that species change over time um, for thousands of years before Darwin proposed the mechanism. And so people had been noticing these changes since um, like ancient Rome and Greece. <clears throat> and evolution is how we um, define that change in species over time. And Charles Darwin gave us the first mechanism that could sort of explain how these species changed um, or the mechanism for evolution. And in, 19, in 1859, he published his uh, book on the origin of species, which included a lot of his observations and experiments from traveling in the Galapagos. And it provided this mechanism to explain evolution or to explain a change in species over time. And that mechanism um, he deemed natural selection. And so natural selection is based on three principles. The first of which is that traits are passed from parents to offspring or they're inherited. The second of these three principles is that there are more offspring produced by a parent than can survive in the environment. And that's because the resources in the environment are limited, which leads to a competition between these offspring uh, for these limiting resources. And the third principle is that offspring will have variation in the traits that they inherit. So these traits which are passed from parents to offspring are gonna be different between different And so using these three principles or these ideas, Darwin created um, his theory of natural selection to explain how evolution causes the species to change over time. And natural selection states that an offspring that inherits traits which allow them to best compete for limited resources will survive, thrive, and have more offspring than those who have less favorable traits. And natural selection is also kind of known as survival of the fittest, where fit um, is a measurement of an organism's ability to survive and reproduce in the environment. And so once again, natural selection says that the offspring that inherit traits that allow them to basically best compete for the resources are going to survive longer, they're going to have more babies, and they're going to pass these favorable traits on to the next generation Whereas offspring with less favorable traits will not be able to compete, they won't survive, um, and those less favorable traits will sort of leave the population. And so we're going to discuss how natural selection relates to the theories on aging and longevity in the next couple slides. And so the first person that we're going to talk about who really theorized um, a little bit about the evolution of aging is a German scientist named um, August Weissman. And he lived in um, sort of the mid to late 1800s from 1834 to 1819. And during his time, it was not clear how those inherited traits passed from parents to offspring were actually inherited. And so the theory at the time was that the somatic cells or the body cells passed everything on uh, directly to the progeny. And so if it happened to the parent cells or the body cells, it was going to be visible in the progeny as well. And so <laughs> Weissman actually conducted an experiment in 
to test this theory. And so what Weissman did was he took mice um, and he cut their tails off and then he allowed them to reproduce. And what we would have expected based on the original theory was that if you cut the mouse tails off, all of the progeny would have the same characteristics as the parents and generation two would have had no tails. But what Weissman saw was that the progeny from generation two actually do have tails. And so despite the fact that you cut those tails off of the body of the parents, <laughs> all of the offspring were still able to make and grow a tail. And so he repeated this experiment over a series of 22 generations. And every time he would cut the tails off of the parents and then allow them to mate and have progeny, and all of those offspring would have tails. And so from these experiments, he was able to conclude that the body cells or the soma cells were completely separate from the germline cells or the sex cells that actually transfer the genes onto the next generation. And that the soma or body cells are not really capable of transferring these genes, it's only the germ cells. And this separation between body and germline um, is really important for understanding aging. <laughs> and it led him to make this trade-off hypothesis, which states that successful reproduction has to be traded for mortality, meaning that <laughs> the soma or the body needs to survive in order to reproduce. But then once that reproduction is over, aging and death can kind of immediately follow. And so the trade-off between being able to pass your genes on to the next generation is the fact that your soma is going to age and die almost immediately. And Weissman originally thought that aging was sort of selected for uh, to eliminate the older individuals who were using up, as he put it, the valuable resources, but were not able to reproduce. And this was based on the idea that fitness or that ability to survive was kind of um, based on the group rather than the individual. But Darwin found the opposite. He found that the variation in individuals and not the group as a whole is what matters for selecting for traits in nature. And so <coughs> Weissman took Darwin's theory into account. Um, it came about right in the middle of his own work, and he actually incorporated it into his kind of like final theory about aging. And he adjusted his thoughts to conclude that aging was actually what he termed um, non-adaptive as a trait. A trait that's basically useless to the individual um, because it's not involved in adaptation. And so, he argued that since aging happens after the point of reproduction in an individual, it can't have any effect on the fitness or that abilities, ability of that organism to reproduce because it has already reproduced. And therefore, natural selection can't act on aging. <laughs> and, then that, and so that is what he deemed as sort of non-adaptive, right? Aging is a useless trait because there's no effect um, on fitness because it happens after fitness already occurred um, and aging just sort of is. It's this neutral or non-adaptive trait that can't be selected for or against. And so expanding upon these ideas, um, the next um, scientist we're going to talk about is an evolutionary biologist named Peter Medawar. And he, or <laughs> his main contribution to these ideas is that not necessarily that natural selection does not act on aging as Weissman thought, but rather that the force of natural selection just declines with age or as fitness decreases. And as organisms age, that extrinsic rate of aging or the rate of aging controlled by the environment begins to play more of a role. And since natural selection acts on genes and not the environment, um, the force of natural selection declines as well. And so Medawar lived at a slightly later time, um, in the early 1900s to 1987. And so the principles of inheritance, genes, and DNA had already been discovered at this time. And so he was able to create a theory more based on what we know about genetics and inheritance. And his theory is known as the mutation accumulation theory of senescence. <laughs> and what he argued is that at older ages or as time passes, natural selection becomes too weak to eliminate some of the deleterious mutations um, that exist in the human population. And these mutations can end up becoming fixed 
And the reason that they can become fixed is because um, the gene distribution in a small population of older people can be seen up here. And what Medawar proposed was that genetic drift had a large role in, um, in aging. Because as a population ages, the chances of any of these two individuals with these genotypes mating with each other goes down because um, reproduction decreases over time, right? And so as the population ages, you can imagine that this population shrinks from even 16 people to possibly two or three that could actually mate with each other. And genetic drift will argue that in a small population, it becomes easy for an allele or one gene to be fixed, even if that gene is actually harmful to the individual. And so based on this idea that <coughs> aging populations have less chance of successful mating, they also then therefore have an increased chance of a harmful mutation or a deleterious mutation becoming fixed in the population. And as a result, these deleterious mutations can lead to aging and senescence. <laughs> and in Medawar's time, there was this idea of genetic determinism, where every single event in biology has a gene that's regulating it. It's probably one gene, um, and it determines everything about that biological process. And therefore, one gene <coughs> that exerts a really harmful effect probably wouldn't get passed to a subsequent generation, right? Because it would kill the organism before it had a chance to reproduce. And so what Medawar theorized was going on with these genes involved in aging and longevity is that there wasn't one particular one with a very harmful or deleterious effect, but rather there was alleles or mutations in hundreds of thousands of different genes that all cause kind of a small, mild negative effect that when added together would contribute to what we see as aging. And so in addition to proposing the mutation accumulation theory um, where genetic drift can fix a harmful mutation in certain populations and that harmful mutation leads to aging, he also argued that these harmful mutations weren't that bad, um, but rather that there was just many, many of them which were sort of mildly negative um, and all contributed to aging. And this was based on the idea <coughs> of how Huntington's disease um, is propagated, which you can read about in your book.